In this video, I'm gonna go through my mixing template for 2024, but before we get started, my name is Ed, you're watching Stoke Sounds. If you like this video and you wanna see more of them, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, comment, all of that great stuff. And if you wanna support the channel, please head over to our website, stokesounds.com, and you'll see we have mixing templates, masterclasses, vocal presets, as well as the Stoke Sound podcast. Let's get into this mixing template. So I have four main folders. I've got the mix bus, all stems, instrumental, all vocals. And that's me in my head just kind of breaking up is what is the elements of a track? You've got the music, which is the instrumental, and then you've got the vocals, which is, you know, the backing vocals, the lead vocals, any oohs, any ahs, any kind of vocal arrangement that goes within the track heads to the all vocals, and then all of them are summed to my mix bus. If we start from the top, my mix bus changes all the time. I usually try and keep a few plugins that are the the same but the ones that are inactive will change from time to time depending on what the track is it's so hard to always do just one thing because every song is so different if you're doing a rock song or a pop song or a ballad it always changes and your approach kind of stays the same in the sense of maybe what tools I'll use, but how I will use those tools will definitely change. If we take a look at the ones that are active that are on every single mix I do, I have the Plugin Alliance metric AB. This is just so if I get a reference through from the client, um, I kind of know what they like the sound of when it comes down to the mix, you know, tonally, um, and also I can listen to kind of the loudness, the stereo imaging of the track and all of those things. So this plugin really helps me out to just reference what they've sent me and also reference their rough mix because you know a lot of artists have demoitis they know their rough mix and so me as a mixer you've got to beat that rough mix so it's always good to know what they've been listening to for a long time and look at you know how has that rough mix been mixed if that makes sense sometimes those rough mixes are really good and you know you mix it and you a b it with the rough mix and you're like ah they've done this and so that analyzer helps me understand kind of exactly what they've done then i have a loudness meter this is just so i can monitor my loudness and and my gain staging. I will talk more about that on another video, um, but I use the Waves loudness meter for that. And then I have the analyzer. Um, it's an old school plugin, but I absolutely love it. And kind of my way of viewing of it is if you get a downward kind of line, it means your kind of mix is kind of balanced. I know you shouldn't always use your eyes, you should use your ears, but this just does kind of give me that kind of visual help as well when needed. If we look at the plugins that are kind of grayed out, you know, I have these plugins set up because I know that I use these plugins a lot. And I know that when I'm mixing, I want to be mixing and I want to be mixing creatively and I don't want to be having to find plugins or remembering what plugins are called to pull them up because that distracts me from mixing and I like to mix fast you know if you mix slow it works for some people but I do find that it just helps me not lose focus on the actual mix and so by having these kind of moves that is in my template I can just reach for them when I need them and I don't need to think about anything else apart from mixing the song so I use this tape saturation quite a bit more so on acoustic stuff if I feel like I want some vintage vibe there I'll use some tape saturation then I've got the black box again more saturation this is kind of for tube kind of sounding stuff um so i will head to this again sometimes i'll just a b see what i'm feeling on the day see what i feel like the mix needs if it's adding a positive effect to the mix i'll keep it if it's not working i'll get rid of it but again it's just a hand to have then i've got the slate fg gray this is a great mix bus compressor i've been loving this lately again this will change sometimes i'll use the waves ssl or the uad one or the uh, bx townhouse um or the ssl SSL version of their SSL G compressor as well. So I just change it up from time to time, but lately on the last uh, few mixes, I've been using the FG Gray, so I've been keeping that into my template, but I do have the others at hand if I need to. Then I've been using this EQ, sometimes, not always, but I do like to shape the mix. People may wonder why. For me, if I get a rough balance and then I can just kind of, just add a little bit of kind of salt and vinegar before I kind of get into it. I like to do that and usually it's around 16K or 20K, I'll just brighten it. But when I'm brightening a mix bus, I'm not brightening it up by 10 dB or anything. It is literally just one or two dB um, just to kind of give me a little bit of a starting point before I actually mix the individual tracks, kind of like top down mixing. Some people kind of don't do that, but it just works for me. Then later on in the mix, I'll tend to pull the ozone out and that's where I'll use the dynamic EQ, uh, then I'll have the dynamics if I need to multiband uh, compress any certain frequencies and the maximizer um, for some limiting um, to take some peaks out before it hits my final limiter and clipper. But again, the ozone stuff with the dynamic EQ, I wouldn't start taking out 500 hertz 
um, if it's an actual big problem, I try and solve it within the actual stems itself. But sometimes when you're mixing, you can get every part sounding great and it's just like a one or two dB causing a problem at a certain frequency. And for me, I can just take it out on the mix bus and it just does the job and I'm happy and it sounds good, so why not? I try not to overthink these things. Then I go into a clipper for loudness. I do actually put this clipper on quite early on. The reason for that is because this clipper has a sound and because it has a sound, I just feel like that that sound is going to affect my process within the individual stems. So I do like to have this on quite early on. And again, it, it gives me competitive loudness. And then I have my final limiter, which is the uh, Fab Filter Pro L2. Again, I change this up from time to time, but I do find I always come back to this one. So I like to have it at hand very quick. Then if we look at the other folders, I'm going to skip the all stems folder for now. That's just because that happens kind of last in the mixing process. So if we go to the instrumental, the instrumental is basically everything, music, drums, everything that's just not vocals you'll see here i have the kick group drum group bass group synth group and so on and so on um however the kick group is inactive 80 percent of the time i'll have you know everything going to the drum group but occasionally if i'm working on like a hip-hop record or something that's very bass heavy i will kind of sum the kick separately if I need to have kind of a more detailed um, EQ on a kick um, then it just means I can have more control by getting that out of the drum group processing that separately get that working better with the bass um, and you know to, to get it to hit harder if need be but as I say 80% of the time I like to keep things simple I like to have all my drums rooted just to a drum group or drum bus and that way I can process the bus and process the individual parts as well you'll see here grayed out that I have kind of my plugins, EQs, my compressors, saturation on these folders all ready to go. The reason why they're inactive on here at the moment is because what I will do is with the mix bus, I'll process that early on. With the drum group, what I'll do is, is kind of do my EQing on the separate drums then I will then do any kind of light touches on the actual folders itself. I try not to do too much on the groups. I try and do it individually just to get it to sit better together. That's kind of my way of doing it. Again, everyone's different. I also have my color coding. For me, I like to have my drums red, bass brown, and so on. You can see here, that's how I do it. And then I also have kind of my music reverbs within the instrumental bus. And so that means that everything goes to the instrumental bus. So if I hit mute, there's no kind of reverb suddenly happening. Everything is bust to where it's meant to go again organizational things so it just happens that i have it like this got perk verb snare verb drum verb um they're the ones i mainly use if i need reverbs and acoustic guitars or electric guitars i have them and i'll put them into the instrumental bus as well again so when i hit mute it's all off and it's all on then we have the all vocals now the all vocal bus again includes leads backing vocals any harmonies any ooze all of that sort of stuff and as well as vocal effects reverbs again all go in as you can see all vocals to the all vocal bus and that bus is then going to the mix bus i have my go-to plugins as you can see inactive on here that i use on lead vocals again this will change from time to time but it just means you know if i want a deesser i don't have to search for a deesser a deesser is a deesser i just pull this deesser up and there it is and it's just bypass and off bypass if need be and you'll see here i've also got my effects all set up as well again so it's just a click of a button if i want something i turn it on and if i don't i turn it off nice and easy no issues there at all and then all of my vocal effects and anything that I would possibly want for vocals is all set up quarter note delays eighth note delays half note ping pong etc um, and as I mentioned all of these effects go into the all vocals so when I'm doing stems or I hit mute if I want to work on the music I'm not having any reverbs or any sudden weird things happening of effects that were on the vocals that because the vocals are muted I'm now only hearing the effect um, so that's for me it's really important to have uh, all of that kind of rooted correctly and it's just a workflow thing and it makes life a lot easier now if we look at the stems usually with stems i'll do a cappella instrumental track backing track uh, the main mix but sometimes, you know, you'll need to have the individual stems. You need to have the BV stem, the lead vocal stem, electric guitar stem, all as separate and not as groups. And so I have a bus set up on my, if we look here, you'll see 
that on each main group, so like the drum group will have a bus sent to it, a send, a zero unity, and that will then go to the drum stem. And that drum stem is colored red. So I know that the drum group and the drum stem is the same color. So when I see a stem of just drum, I know that that's come from the drum group. I am an absolute perfectionist with organization. I think it's probably the main thing to get right when it comes down to mixing because you know, it's so easy to lose focus. So to me, that's very important. And again, it's the same. I have a stem bass, stem synth, and, and so on and so on. And that will just go into these individual audio tracks, which will then get printed. I'll just hit record and then I'll just record that in um, and that will go straight to it. It does bypass the mix bus. For me, the mix bus is as a collective. Um, so, you know, to have mix bus processing on a synth stem is not going to do much at all and there's no need. So that's why I have them on the groups and I don't have it, you know, side chain to the mix bus or anything like that. It just literally goes to the stem audio track. So that's kind of my go to mixing template. I use this all the time and I also have my groups here to the side. You can see all vocals, instrumental, all stems and all for everything. And I just have it nice and tidy. So it's just made up of four things. And that's it, that's my mixing template for 2024. I will be leaving this as a free download in the description below. So if you feel like you wanna take a little bit of this or all of it, and you wanna incorporate it into your mixing style, your mixing kind of workflow, then feel free to. As I said at the start of the video, I will be doing content every single week. So if there is anything that you want, then please do comment below. It really does help. Also subscribe to the channel so you make sure you get updated with everything. And that's it from me and I'll see you next week.